Hello friends, welcome back to the shop. Today is Sunday, April 4th, 2021, Easter Sunday. And I want to wish all my Christian brothers and sisters that are celebrating Easter today a very happy and blessed Easter season. Uh, all of our dear Jewish friends, uh, I want to wish you a happy Pashk. And I think that's a little bit less offensive than me trying to say Hag Semehak. <laughs> Happy Passover. Uh, and of course, to, to my Orthodox brothers and sisters, uh, just save this video and watch it in a couple of weeks. Uh, that's a joke. For you guys that don't know, the Orthodox uh, celebrate Easter on a different calendar. I mean, their, their religious observances are based on the Julian calendar, whereas uh, Roman Catholic and most, if not all, uh, Protestant denominations celebrate Easter based on the Gregorian calendar. Uh, and of course, Passover, yeah, the, the, the dates of, of these, uh, you know, how the dates are set is really fascinating. And that's part of what I wanted to talk about today. So Passover is, is interestingly, and I, I don't know very much at all about the Jewish calendar. So maybe one of our Jewish friends could make a video explaining this a bit better. Uh, but Passover is always on the 15th day of, I hope I pronounced this correctly, Nisan, N-I-S-A-N, the Jewish month of Nisan. And because the Jewish calendar is a lunar calendar, the 15th day of Nisan always occurs on the full moon. So Passover always occurs on the full moon uh, in Nisan. Now, Easter is a little bit more complicated. So Easter is based on the equinox, the spring equinox. And it is the first Sunday after the full moon that occurs either after or on the spring equinox. So it's the it's basically the first full moon after the equinox Sunday. Um and of course, the, the difference between the Orthodox and, and the, the Eastern versions of that, uh, I'm sorry, the, the Orthodox and the, and the Roman version of that is that uh, the difference in the calendar. So the, the Orthodox need to add all the days that are skipped in the Gregorian calendar, and that extends their date. So these three things don't necessarily fall at the same time, and sometimes they don't even overlap with you know Passover and Easter, but they all occur around spring, and you know it's part of uh, it's it's part of spring. So I've heard criticisms of um, Easter, Christmas. I'm sure that folks criticize Passover as well, uh, saying, "Well, you you don't actually know that." thing you're celebrating happen on that day like you know I'm, I'm celebrating the resurrection of christ and i i don't know for a fact that it occurred on this day and that's ostensibly true because this day is different each year right it's linked to the lunar cycle so what you know what do i know what am i celebrating we get this a lot at christmas you know you don't know that christ was born on christmas day that that's that's not true uh, he you just picked that day because it aligns with the pagan festival of Saturnalia, the Roman festival of Saturnalia. And we get a lot of the uh, Easter uh, uh, equinox, you know, spring worship type things. We get criticisms from that. Okay. And my answer to that is, do you think my faith is so small that it needs to be linked to the calendar? I mean, the calendar is a way for us to, you know, once we figured out that time runs in circles, you know, you got spring followed by summer, followed by fall, followed by winter, followed by spring. <laughs> once we figured out that that was kind of cyclical, then we started trying to chop that up so that we could say, oh, we got this many more events until the next spring. And spring is important because that's when we plant stuff. And we've done increasingly better jobs at doing that. You know, our current version is not perfect. We still have to, we got to have leap year, right? And we still have leap seconds that get added every once in a while. So it's not perfect because 
you know, we think in, in terms of integers and, and the planets are not bound by such things. <laughs> they, they just do their thing and we're trying to force a natural cycle into our very limited uh, understanding of, of such things. I mean, we can predict perfectly the orbits of, of, of the planets uh, pretty darn perfectly. But if we want to use integers and say, you know, it's this many days, it, it, it'll never work because they're not following integers, they're real numbers. Anyway, <laughs> I'm getting way off, off point here. The point is that the calendar is very important. Spring is very important. And observations of religious holidays are very important whether they be commemorating important things that happened historically or possibly just commemorating um, times of the year when we need to prepare for something. For example, Lent, where we're preparing for the event of Easter. Or uh, Advent, which is the time leading up to Christmas, where we're preparing for the events of Christmas. And I believe, and again, I know very, very little, so I, I hope that... Uh, I'm corrected if I'm wrong about any of this. I believe that Passover is also a period of uh, expectation until the day of Passover. And it's a celebration of the uh, the rebirth of the Jewish people after their slavery in, in Israel. Uh, Easter is a celebration of the rebirth of, of, of the Christian people as they're freed from sin by the resurrection of, of Christ. Um, and in most of these these things that occur this time of year are going to be in some way a celebration of rebirth, and, and that's that's good. That's because they're linked to the season. That that all makes sense. But it doesn't hurt my faith. You know, I don't need to know that Jesus rose from the dead on April fourth, uh, zero, A.D. I I know he did, and. I like to commemorate that every year, and the most convenient way we have to do that is to rely on picking a date based on our current calendar and somewhat linked to the spring equinox. That's okay. It, it, there's nothing wrong with that. It doesn't have to be this day. You know, um, the same thing with, with Christmas. I, I have no idea if Christ was born on de December 25th. I doubt very much he was. but. I want to celebrate the fact that he was born every year, and that's a perfectly fine date. Now, the other criticism is, though, you just you just did that because you wanted to offset the Saturnalia. You wanted to have something to take people's minds off of the Saturnalia. Or uh, with Easter, they always bring up the Druids. <laughs> you know, you're just you're just copying the the Druids' fertility rites or the Druids' rites of spring. Or, yeah. <clears throat> You know, I, I, whenever anybody brings up the Druids, I'm always reminded of the movie Spinal Tap, where uh, they they have this great line. That they're it's it's part of this this big number they're doing around Stonehenge, and <laughs> the line is, "The Druids, nobody knew who they were or what they were doing, and yet their legacy lives on," <laughs> and that's kind of true. Uh, we don't know very much about them. So, you know, these criticisms, I, I don't take them seriously because, again, we're just trying to find a way to commemorate something on an annual cycle. And it makes sense to celebrate Easter in the spring, just like it makes sense to celebrate the Passover in the spring. And it makes sense to celebrate the, the birth of Christ in towards the end of the year in December, you know, because it's, it's, that's the beginning of, of the cycle. It just, it, it's okay that it occurs at the same time that people decided to do this or that, because there's, it makes sense that they decided to do this and that. And that really is an important point. You know, we shouldn't be afraid of other cultures or other religions, in particular other religions. You know, sometimes people think that by listening to me talk about my Roman Catholic faith, it's in some way going to challenge their uh, faith. Or if I if I were to read about the Native American practice of welcoming spring, 
uh, whatever tradition that might be, that that in some way could hurt my faith in in Christianity. That that's not. It should only strengthen it. If it weakens it, it was weak to begin with. I think the more we understand how other people see the world and, and see their God, and keeping in mind that their God is probably our God under a different name, the better we become and the more capable we become in understanding and defending our faith to ourselves. And really that is the person who you have to defend your faith to. You know, yeah, there may come a day when there's a gun held to your head and you're asked, you know, do you, are you one of them Christians or are you one of them Jews or whatever? And you know, it's happened in the past. So of course it could happen. And yes, then you may need to defend your faith. But for the vast majority of us, we are the most important people that we need to convince. And I wonder sometimes if the people that are out there fighting the battle of, you know, no, my brand of Christianity is better than your brand of Christianity. <clears throat> or you Muslims are all wrong. You, you should all be Taoists, just to pick something crazy. Not that Taoists are crazy, but you know. Those people are the ones that are least comfortable in their own faith. They have this fear that if everybody does not believe exactly what they believe, then they are compromised in some way. That's a weak faith. You should be comfortable with other points of view, even if you think they're wrong. You know, I don't want to pick on any particular group. But there are a couple of branches of, of Christianity where, you know, things are a little crazy. And I've met some people uh, in those branches and I've talked to them. Sorry about all the smoke here. By the way, um, three nuns in a Paul Winslow, Mr. Winslow. Thank you, Durham Duke. You know, I've talked to them. Um, some were family friends. Uh, some knocked on my door. And I think it was good. I think it was, you know, I, I heard some things that I was surprised by. Um, I challenged them in a, in a kind way. I said, well, that's not what I believe. I believe this. And they listened to me. And they said, well, you're wrong about that. I said, well, I think you're wrong about this. And and we went our separate ways happy. Um, of course, some of them come back. But you, I learned the hard way that once you, when they knock on your door, if, if you engage them in, in even polite conversation, they're much more likely to return. Uh, anyway, it's, it's healthy. It, it helps us build our faith to challenge ourselves and to talk to others about their faith and not to challenge them, but to understand them and to help them understand you. And that's where all this was going. So don't be afraid when somebody says you don't know if Easter happened on April 4th and don't be afraid when somebody says Easter is just another version of the Druid festival of whatever Druids festivalized. Be afraid when you doubt it yourself. Be strong when other people doubt you and, and explain to them why you see it the way you do. Yeah. Religion's a funny thing. It, it, it's at once very personal and at the same time very public. Um, and that might be by intention. It might be necessary for us to be constantly testing ourselves in such ways. 
I don't know. But that was, uh, those were my thoughts for this Easter, Passover, soon to be Orthodox Easter season. I hope you're all having a wonderful, wonderful weekend uh, and a beautiful Sunday with your friends and family, regardless of what you might be celebrating today. If anything, just take the time to celebrate the fact that you are alive and that you can be with your friends and family. Well, I'm going to finish this pipe and I'm going to go be with my friends and family. I hope you all have a wonderful Sunday, great week ahead. Uh, We'll probably see you on Wednesday. We'll see how the week goes. But y'all take care then. And until we speak again, I look forward to talking to you all again very soon. Take care now.